Hi everyone! Tom was here, and it is officially April 2024, which means it is draft season. The NFL draft is at the end of this month, and the Pittsburgh Steelers had a very interesting offseason so far. A lot of twists and turns, a lot of unexpected things that they did um, that nobody really expected them to do. Not only adding Russell Wilson, but also adding Justin Fields, trading away Kenny Pickett, adding Cordell Patterson, adding uh, Patrick Queen. A lot of intrigue um, on the Steelers offseason, but like most of the NFL, everything went hot and heavy for the beginning of free agency and the like, and then since then it's kind of tapered off a little bit. Yes, there were things like the Stephon Diggs to Houston trade and stuff like that, but there was not really... You notice everybody kind of cooled down a little bit, and I thought it was pretty surprising that the Steelers cooled down a bit, because although the Steelers have made a ton of ads to their roster, they have not added at certain key positions that I really thought they were going to add to. Namely, center. Now, maybe they want to experiment with her big at center. Um, if I'm Russell Wilson or Justin Fields, I don't know if I necessarily want to put the keys in someone that has never really snapped at an NFL level. That's kind. Of, it reminds me maybe too much of a Kendrick Green 2.0 situation. I have concerns there. I do feel center is their biggest need. Right behind it is now wide receiver. You traded Deontay Johnson. You added Van Jefferson. Van Jefferson is not Deontay Johnson. Um, and Van Jefferson is not a two. Van Jefferson is not a three, in my opinion. They also added Quez Watkins. He's not a three, in my opinion. Who's your three? Who's your two? There was rumors, and there were just rumors, that the, they were going to trade for Brandon Ayuk um, from San Francisco. I guess before the draft, you know, they could they could do something like that. They could do something like that on draft night if they wanted to. Um, but, you know, it's it may be a lot to pay. No, don't get me wrong. The Steelers are dead last in offensive money currently. They pay they're the number 1 in terms of salary cap given to the defense and they are 32nd at least as as I last checked of the salary given to the offense. So, I wouldn't mind picking up a big name receiver and paying him some money just to balance it out a little bit. But it is also the draft. And as the usual with the Steelers, even though there's a new GM in Omar Khan, the thought process is still that they can find a wide receiver or two in this draft to make up the difference. But it's going to be a very interesting draft to, you know, add to a very interesting Steelers offseason. It's always an interesting draft, um, but this one in particular, um, especially this offseason, kind of went from officially the Kevin Colbert era to the Omar Khan era. Um, him switching to, um, him, you know, shipping off Kenny Pickett, bringing in Fields, bringing in Russell Wilson is very, very interesting. They have never turned around their entire QB room, I think, since 1957. So this is a new look Steelers team coming into the season, but they have holes to fill. Their main holes, in my personal opinion, by need, are center, wide receiver, corner, tackle. Um, you could probably flip corner and tackle. Um, you know, do you really want Dan Moore starting in yet another season? I don't necessarily, but that's also not my most pressing need. So. We're going to go through this draft. I use NFL Mock Draft Simulator. If anybody has a better mock draft option, the reason why I like Mock Draft Simulator is they offer trades, they grade the draft picks, and it's free. <laughs> I don't necessarily want to pay money for another month just to do some mocks. So, let's get into it. Pittsburgh Steelers Mock Draft 1.0 for the 2024 season on Tom Was Here. Hey, I'm Patrick Baby, and you're watching Tom Was Here. Okay, let's light this candle. Now, the only thing I don't like about Mock Draft Database Simulator, and that's why I'm asking for you if you have one that you like better, is because it occasionally does some weird things. Even weirder than the actual draft itself. Don't get me wrong, last year, you know, it had C.J. Stroud falling to the Steelers pick. And we knew that wasn't going to happen. But, you know, 
in the actual draft, Joey Porter fell to the second round, and he was getting taken in, in most mock drafts, you know, anywhere from 10 to, to 25. So, mm, who knows? What's what's weird or what's not? Um, obviously, if Caleb Williams fell here to 20, it kind of invalidates the entire draft. That would be very strange if that were to happen. So, let's get into it. Let's see how this falls. It's going to move hot and heavy before it gets the Steelers pick. Let's go. Okay, Drake May went first. <laughs> Drake May went first. Now, that's funny. Uh, yeah, that might be fun. I, I'm fine with that. That's fun. Okay, five trade offers here. Um, this first one is tempting because you're trading from 20 to 27. You're picking up a third, 90. You're picking up a fifth and a sixth. Not bad. Um, considering, you know, the Steelers might be interested in that haul. Let's put it that way. Next one, you're trading out of the first round. You're getting a 7th and a 2025th. Four, that ain't happening. You're trading all the way to the second. No, hold on. No, you're trading all the way to the second. You're trading all the way to 57. You're gaining a 7th this year. You're gaining a 1st and a 4th next year. Tempting, but considering you only have two quarter, two quarterbacks. Actually, all the quarterback room, now that I think about it. Russell Wilson is on a one-year deal. Justin Fields, because they're not going to pick up his option, is on a one-year deal. And Kyle Allen is on a one-year deal. So your entire quarterback room is on a one-year deal. I don't know if you're putting your eggs in the next year's basket. I believe this is a win-now move. Um, win-now move that cannot be made here with a first-round pick next year, even though it's tempting. Um, Cowboys... Two sevens, a second, a third, and a fifth. No, thank you. Absolutely not. Uh, the Rams, interesting. Rams offering, dropping 32 spots, picking up two threes, a six, a seven, 20, 25, six. That's a lot, um, but no. This Cardinals offer is the most tempting one, but I'm with Mock Draft 1.0, I'm going to have them stand pat here um, and make the pick. And there's some interesting names on the board. You got Brock Bowers, um, which I've seen in mock drafts. Him falling, um, you know, him him falling in mock drafts. To be honest with you, at one point early in this process, he was, you know, they were talking about him top five. Now, you know, he's less than what I saw. He's going to Green Bay at like 26 or something like that. Um, personally, for me, I've addressed the Steelers' top need as center. Um, and I do think they have to go center. Um, there are plenty of other needs, but I think center comes first. And, you know, if they didn't go to LSU Pro Day, so I don't think they'd be interested in Brian Thomas. Um, at least not the whole farm went to LSU Pro Day, um, which usually does signal a first-round pick. I'm saying they take Jackson Powers Johnson here. I think that is ultimately the pick. If he's still on the board, they need a center. They need a center badly. And I think this um, definitely helps to shore up that O-line. Now, moves are now coming hot and heavy here. Um, obviously, they don't pick again until 51. Um, so, you know, it'll be interesting to see the names that are still on the board here. Uh, okay. Three trade offers. You got a fifth, a sixth, a 2025, two, 20, nah, not for, no, not necessarily that one. Um, 51 to 53, you're dropping two spots and picking up a 2025 seventh. Is that enough of a value? Even though you're dropping two spots, is that no, a seventh round next year? It doesn't really get you much. Um, and then, let's see, did I miss one? Oh, yeah, the Ravens. The Ravens of all people. Oh, one to drop from second to the fourth round, pick up a 2025, two and three. Tempting, but no. We're having them stand pat yet again. And now, um, okay, plenty of interesting names here. You have Jordan Morgan, there's Keon Coleman, which is intriguing. Um, Xavier Leggett. They also haven't taken a high safety in forever um jordan morgan as well tackle there's no harm in getting a tackle <laughs> um in this circumstance as much as i do want to see them get a tackle i believe i'm gonna have them take um where is he where's this guy 
Keon Coleman here, the receiver. Um, I think that receiver, even though I'm, I'm hesitant to start a rookie receiver because they're so, you know, at least especially in their first year, you know, they don't really catch on um, as quickly as other players do. I mean, even even though, like, so for example, like Pickens um, in his first year, or Claypool or whatever. Now, Claypool had, you know, an RA first year. A couple other players had an RA first year, but never like the dynamite first year that a solid veteran receiver would be able to pull down. So, just because of the need, I'm taking Keon Coleman here. I'll pick again to 84. Now, of 84 and 98, they have two third round picks. So, that part is interesting. Okay, four trade offers here. Um, 84, 5th, the 7th, 2025, 20, 3, and 6. No. Uh, <laughs> see, these, this is the part I don't like about the mock draft based simulator. Uh, moving from 384 to 4, to 129, getting a 6, 2, 7, instead of 2025, 20, 3rd. Would they give all that away? They would not. Um, and then. Drop into a fifth and then getting a 2025 third round pick. Uh, but no. And Bears are just like, yeah, just trade out of that completely and get a third and a fifth next year. So no to that as well. There's got to be a player on the board that's worth the selection. Um, let's see. You got a Blake Corum. We don't need any running backs. Um, Cam Kitchens. Now that's, that's not necessarily a need. But I'm not mad at it either. <laughs> um, in this case, I do feel the top three picks, I don't know exactly what order they're going to be in, but I do feel the top three picks are center, wide receiver, and tackle. However, there's Max Mel Melton sitting here, um, which is above round value, corner. He's the top player on the board, and that is intriguing. Cam Kitchens' safety is intriguing. I'm going to say, hmm, <laughs> this makes it tough. Um, because of the value, um, because of the second round value, just, you know, share the second round value, I'm going to say Max Melton here. Um, I do feel that they could go back to the well and trade or sign a free agent tackle. There are a few left. There are not necessarily as many centers left on, you know, there's really hardly any except for Connor Williams. But there are more tackles available but corners, there's nothing wrong with adding another corner. They need several, I believe. Um, so let's try Max Melt. Okay, so we're moving right along here to pick 98. Five trade offers for pick 98. Jets are offering a 4, 7, 20, 25, 5th, and 6th. No thank you. Um, Seahawks next year. Can't wait till next year. A four, six, 2025, no, not so that. Six, no, not next year stuff. Um, fifth, six, no, no, none of these things. None of, none of these things I like. I don't like any of these things. However, <laughs> and here I wanted to get my tackle, but here's Cam Kitchens that I looked at for the last pick, and he's the top guy on the board. And I'll be honest, I don't like that they ever... They always seem to not draft the safety until real late. They draft like a six-round guy and hope it'll work out. Um, you know, they somebody that could fill in, a, a you know, as maybe a nickel role, potentially to a safety role. They do need a safety. They do need a safety, I feel. Um, so I'm going to take Cameron Kitchens here, and I'm going to feel pretty good about it. The only concern I have at this point, because the draft has fallen pretty good for the Pittsburgh Steelers, is, of course, a tackle. Um, there is a tackle concern. Um, you know, like I said, they can address this in free agency. I do feel that they can address it via trade, I feel. Um, while six trade offers for the four, hot and heavy action in this fourth round. Um, not waiting until next year, Browns. Uh, seventh, no... So 119 to 124, I'm picking up a 6. That's a move I think they would make. Um, 
depend unless somebody was really high on their board there. Um, so the, once again, here's mock draft database. That, that, okay, one nineteen, and the Eagles are one twenty, a fifth, and a sixth next year. They wouldn't need all that ammo to move up one spot in the fourth round. They just wouldn't. They just wouldn't. There'd be no reason for them to do that sort of thing. Of course they'd take that deal. I would take that deal. Even if I wanted someone, I would take that deal. Um, not next year. And then a fifth and a sixth, which is not bad. Not bad. You're trading for the fourth, but you're getting you know additional picks value. Um, but no, none of those. None of those. Maybe no trades in this one. Um, now... There are other needs. There are other needs for this team. But man, I see Jerry Rice's kid sitting there. And I see a wide receiver room filled with, you know. If he's even a, a sliver of what his dad was. But do I double dip at receiver? Okay, so Brendan Rice is the pick here. And then they don't pick again for a good long while. They only have two more picks in the draft. 178 and 195. Um, at this point, you know, as we all know from drafts, you're talking about a real shot in the dark. <laughs> you know, if any one of us pulls off something in this, although I just saw Kalen King go by, and I was slightly intrigued by such a thing, um, <laughs> just because, you know, it's uh, Penn State. Uh, I mean, they would do this. If that's the offer, the Steelers, any team would jump all over that. You're dropping two spots in the sixth, you're getting another sixth. That means who they're moving up for they really, really want. Is it Luke McCaffrey? I'm seeing that name down there. Um, you know, that'd be worth two six-round picks in the sixth for them, dropping two spots to get their six-round pick. I would take it normally. But since it's 1.0, I'm not going to do that. Um, really, at this point, feeling pretty good about where we stand. You know, the only concern for me is you put you invested a lot in the offense, of which the offense currently, as mentioned, is the 32nd paid offense in the league. They're the lowest paid offense in the league. Um, so you infused a lot of talent into that offense. I don't feel you need any more wide receivers. Oh, Luke McCaffrey's there. You don't need a safety. You don't need another interior line. I mean, you could use another interior lineman if you want. I was really looking for tackle, but man, there's just no tackles to be had at this point here, at least well down the list. Well down the list. Um, I think you got to stick with value up here. Um, somebody that's still on the board and shouldn't be. Um... I mean, you already took Max Melton. You took a, a corner and a safety. Would you need another corner? Would it be worth another corner? Would you double dip at two different positions in here? Potentially. Like a Jalen Simpson, perhaps? Auburn? Uh, you know, the Steelers don't shy away from linebackers. And here's Curtis Jacobs sitting here. Um, you know, they almost they don't almost take a linebacker in every draft. That may be something I'm going to take here. So let's say Curtis Jacobs, the linebacker from Penn State. Um, I, I'll be honest, I don't know a ton about him. But, um, you know, that could be somebody that they grab. Um, just because, just because, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, you have a corner. Um, or you have, you know, kind of the needs filled and the tackle was not there. So you just take what you feel is best available on your board. I don't know if that's necessarily the case with them, but they do love a good linebacker in a draft. So um, let's see, two trade offers here. No, no. Last pick in the draft. Where do you go? Where do you go? Could go edge. Joe Milton. He's not there. Joe Milton. Um. See Miles Cole. You filled their punter need. Well, look, I I see him sitting there. Um, 
He wouldn't be like exceptional value or anything, but let's just do it for fun. Um, I know he's been linked to the Steelers given his background. Here's another pick guy. It's MJ Devonshire. Um, you know, that would give him a second corner in the room. Um, let's do that. Let's do that. Not not a great grade on that one. Every other one was a, a great grade. I think, you know, I would have taken maybe this Chow Smith Wade dude um, just based on the value that was on the board for us here. Um, but I feel pretty good about this draft. Maybe they double dipped to too many positions, double dipped to corner, double dipped to receiver. I don't feel it's a bad thing um, to have more corners and receivers that they desperately need. Um, okay, so then here's the final rankings here. Um, Jackson Powers Johnson is an A. Keon Coleman's an A+. Plus. Max Melton is an A+. Plus. Cam Kitchens is an A+. Plus. Brendan Rice, a B+. Plus. Curtis Jacobs, A. Devonshire, C. Not too bad. Not too bad. Um, let me know your thoughts on the, um, this Steelers draft. Do you like it? Do you not like it? Do you feel I passed up on someone that you felt was better fitted? Do you think tackle is a more pressing need than what I let on here? Don't get me wrong. I do not want Dan Moore starting another game. I think Dan Moore would be a great backup slash swing tackle, um, but I don't think he's a guy that should be starting all 16 on the offensive line, especially at the crucial left tackle position. Um, I think Broderick Jones, that should be a natural move over there for him, and I think they can find a right tackle either in free agency or this draft. Unfortunately, the board did not fall that way for me, um, and maybe... Maybe I took too many receivers for your liking. Maybe I should have taken a tackle. Maybe I took too many corners for your liking. Maybe I should have taken a tackle. But I decided to go where I wanted to go, and I feel pretty good about doing it. But let me know your thoughts. A mock draft 1.0. No trades in this one. Could have made some. Definitely could have made some based on those. Um, but yeah, let me know your thoughts on this draft. Do you like it? Do you hate it? Do you want to see different players taken? Are you not high on Jackson Powers Johnson? you think another center is better? Let me know in the comments down below. But guys, thanks so much for watching. If you are new here, make sure to like, share, and subscribe. You can support me on Patreon, like John Bailey, like Brett Persing, like Faye N. You can do so. Link is in the description below. If you'd like to buy a t-shirt, hey Tom, what's your t-shirt? You can do so. It's Redshirt, as well as links to my eBay store, Facebook page, Instagram, TikTok, and the Pennsylvania Autograph Collectors Association. Links are in the description below. But when it comes to the 2024 Mock Draft 1.0 for the Pittsburgh Steelers, guys, Thanks so much for watching, and until the next video, I will see you soon. But until then, bye everyone.